Greetings and welcome to Outlaw Gamer Radio, the official podcast of OutlawGamers.com. This is the show where we live to play and play to live. I'm Brent Adams, joined by a man who is going to be very disappointed when he finds out that the Steam that's changing their refund policy isn't the strip club across the street, <laughs> Mr. Tony Grice. Tony! I, it is disappointing because when I first heard that, I'm like, I'm I'm going to be in the money. I, I got know. like a I, lot of money coming back you, to you me. Texted because me because Lord knows so I have excited. not gotten my money's worth there. <laughs> well, it's I mean it's uh, it's Tennessee. I mean what are you what are you going to do? <laughs> uh, but yes, I, I know too, you're I know you're weird. disappointed about that, but you know there's a lot of people. I mean that, that's not to say that still can't be cool. Sure. Yeah. No. Absolutely. But, it just uh, means that half price drinks are. Still, <laughs> are still overpriced is what it means. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me back uh, second thanks week in a row. Back, and, and to be honest, let's, thanks for not having Daniel on this week's episode. <laughs> this should this should go way more smooth. No, I'm just playing. Mm-hmm. No, that was awesome. That was that was that a was lot fun. of fun last week, and uh, I I appreciate you for putting that together. That was fun getting the uh, the old crew back together. Putting the band back together. It was. It was a good time. Actually, and just like uh, many old band reunions, we broke up again right after that. Immediately after the reunion. Uh, we probably would have had Daniel back this week, uh, except for the fact that he is just incredibly busy. He, yeah. just, he absolutely cannot make time for it this weekend. Yep. Uh, otherwise, it might have been the three of us again. Busy B. Anywho, uh, we're going to get busy ourselves talking about... All of the interesting pre E three news and announcements that have come. I guess that I'm not surprised because we have seen this starting to happen more and more people preempting the E three rush of news to get their announcements yep. in there. But there are some surprising it's surprising some of the stories that have broke because you kind of think, wow, like that would have dominated E3. Like you didn't have anything to worry about getting lost in the shuffle. As an example, Fallout 4. <laughs> we have the official trailer for Fallout 4. I'm sure you've seen it at this point. People are already starting to bitch about how it doesn't look all that hot. <laughs> um, no, you want to no know fucking how, pleasing anyone these days, you know? You want to know how bad it got? I mean, they were saying like, well, maybe this thing's coming to PS3 and 360 and that's why it looks so bad. That's like calling somebody's child fat. I mean, that is just, that's out of bounds. And ugly. And ugly. Um, Because fat is beautiful. Anyway, uh, my point, though, is that Fallout 4 has been announced. And we've got the official trailer, and they're already releasing, you know, screenshots and talking. You can pre-order it like five seconds after the trailer leaked. So somebody uh, was already taking like I think it was uh, like Green Man Gaming Green or Man, one of those yeah, that, guys. Yeah, that figures. It was like, and, and you already could save like sixteen bucks off of it too, or whatever it was. And I was just like, yeah. do you even like do you even have a deal to get the game yet? Like it literally was just announced. How can you promise that? You, you know what it's a little bit like. It's about it's about like it's like tuning into a local news station. And they're like, we're going now live to our man in the field uh, where a forest fire has just broken out. <laughs> a forest fire has just broken out And they here. cut to the guy, and he's like fanning the flames. I'm standing here as a forest fire has just broken out. It's a little bit like that. Anyway. A little bit like that. Um, we make the news happen. That's exactly right. So we have, uh, we've got Fallout 4. Some people are saying, eh, maybe it doesn't look so hot, but perhaps it's just the fact that Fallout still kind of looks like Fallout, and... I don't, I don't know. I mean, like the the thing that I was thinking about is, it looks pretty consistent with where Fallout was in Fallout Three and, and New Vegas and all that. And in terms of it, yeah. you know, being like a very drab, very, uh, very somber sort of mood, and and the color palette matches that. And you know, that color palette dominated last generation. Like seventh console generation was all about brown and dark green. Yeah. And we've really moved past that into, you know, people have kind of, they're kind of over that and like, let's have some color again. And I wonder if part thank, of people's God, reaction, to be yeah, I agree. Too. Yes, I, I agree. Yeah. It's, well, the, the, here's the thing. That's fine. Taken by itself, that is absolutely fine. It's just not so great when everybody's doing the same thing. Well, I mean, that's the thing. The world is made up of colors and, and sometimes it is drab colors. And that's the yeah. thing why I think that actually might be a good, it, 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 like right this second, it may or may not be working for it. 
But once the game comes out, that actually may work in its favor sure. because it will Let's actually look out. a little different from all the other things out there. You know, mm-hmm. uh, when it, when it when it drops, and it fits and the context it, of the game. I mean, it makes and sense. exactly fits the game. Yep. Yeah. So I what, guess that the big surprise here, though, is just the fact that they preempted their own fucking press conference. I mean, they've yeah. got a fu- like Bethesda's having a fucking press conference, and no, you, Fallout Four was going to be the big thing they announced. And what the fuck are they going to do now? I mean, I guess they're going to do gameplay and, and and all that. Maybe they've got some, maybe they got some surprise up their sleeve maybe they got fucking elder scrolls 6 i don't know but it just seemed to me that it seemed really odd to kind of like spill what was easily the most anticipated part of their press event two weeks early i I was a little surprised i i do think there is that whole thing of you know when the the good and bad thing the good thing about e3 is that it's like that one time where if you're a fan of gaming yeah you're gonna get just download of of tons of of information and there's going to be something that you're interested in you know even if there's a lot of stuff that you're not interested in there's going to be things that you are interested in and it's such a um dense uh in terms of 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 new information and whatnot and whatnot but from a developer and publisher standpoint I bet that that is the reason they kind of have wanted to get away from it is because it's like, okay, well, so then we got to keep so many things held back or we can't show anything or we don't want to show anything until this one period of time. And then we're fighting not only against everyone else, but against our own other stuff, Yeah, you know, like if, especially if they are going to have maybe some other announcement. So I, I actually don't think that it is the worst idea in the world to let something like this drop a little early because then – it, I mean, it basically it did it for for a day or so. It was absolutely without you know question the talk that everybody was talking about. Whereas yeah, if it, it just comes so out, happened that the talk was you know lame. Well, uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll I'm, speak I'm to that just, here in just a second it, too. But I, I, I do think that that was maybe not necessarily the worst idea in the world. No, now, I can now see that. They, I can see that if the if we get to E three and they literally have absolutely nothing else, well. Then maybe maybe, maybe I might mistake. go back on that a little and say, okay, well, look, if you have nothing else to show, maybe you should have show, you know saved this to to sort of right. be there. But anyway, I think we're going to probably see some gameplay. I think we might ac- actually get some other announcements. You know, if it's if it's a huge like an Elder Scrolls announcement or something like that, then I I think this is probably smart. They're not going to be competing with it. If it's something smaller, eh, you know, whatever. It, right. it, it probably it probably did just as well for them to release it. Uh, you know, when they did, as opposed to to waiting on it. To me, it the, just uh, it just feels like. People were already so excited about Bethesda having a press event. Yeah, that it felt like they already were going to kind of be under. near the top of the pile. Like they were going to have to compete sure. too hard. That that that's will, the thing about it to me. That, that but maybe I'm just could maybe could, my expectation is inaccurate. No, well, but you know, but you so you pointed out something, and I I do think it's maybe a bit harsh. But you know, a lot of people have been kind of talking about their sort of uh, yeah not being blown away by the trailer. You know, I think I think fans of the series were were happy with it, but like the people that are sort of on you know uh, on the uh, the edge, sort of going back or forth, I, I don't think there was anything there that really just blew them away. And I wonder if this could actually you know have been the reason they did bring it out now, because if they did drop this trailer in the middle of E three when everybody was expecting something really amazing, and it comes out and it's not quite as amazing, that actually might have looked even worse up against all the other right. amazing trailers that we'll probably see around E3. So I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of reasons. I do think, just for a second, maybe we could talk about just the, you know, like maybe our our takes on it. You know, I'm not really that much of a fan of the Fallout series, but I, I thought the trailer looked interesting. It looked like a, it looked like it would mm-hmm. be a, you know, fun world to be in. But I don't think, like, I didn't ever even think, like, the, the last Fallout game looked all that amazing you know i mean just in terms of like just graphical prowess against other games out there Mm. it was more about the gameplay it was more about you know what you could do i mean it's kind of honestly similar almost in a way to something like a a grand theft auto you know if you take like any one scene like sitting in the middle of a city and you look at like the quality of the textures on the building or the quality textures on a car or the, the, you know, the, the people around you, there are games out there that probably look better than it, you know, in any one given scene. The thing that's amazing about that game is it's this huge world that you can go play within that all looks 90% of what everything else is. Whereas the other games are much more linear in what you can do. And so, you know, they, they, 
you know, they, they have to be more impressive in those you know, certain sections. And I think that's something like what a Fallout game has to do right. is like, look, we, we want to create this world that you can do so many amazing things. And unfortunately, that might mean that, you know, if you stop and take a screenshot at any one point or, or show one little clip of it, it may just may not be as jaw dropping as you might hope for. But I, I thought it looked I thought it looked like it would be a good game. Right. I won't say that the graphics um, blew me away. I, th- I, I think that that's actually I think that's that, actually what, a pretty reasonable take? take on it. You know, I don't have a huge investment in the Fallout series, but uh, I have I have become more, I guess, maybe a fan of Bethesda as a studio lately. And so my interest level is a little bit yeah. higher because of that. But for me, Peaked not really recently, having yeah. the uh, not really having the fondness for the franchise up till now, I'm kind of more excited about seeing gameplay yeah. and and what all is going to be involved. I mean, I know in general what Fallout consists of, but uh, seeing gameplay and seeing the sure, specific sure. kinds of things that that they're doing in this game, mechanics, features, so forth, that'll be the thing that. That probably gets me excited. Um, yeah, and something we'll else see a more that, that we'll uh, hopefully yeah, see a little bit more of at E three is the rumored, leaked, then confirmed Uncharted remastered collection. Lauren is kicking himself right now that he's not here to talk about this because I know this was something that he really wanted to see was an HD remaster for PS four of the Uncharted trilogy, and here we got it. Uh, this is going to be coming out ahead. Of Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, which is uh, slated for early 2016. Uh, currently, you can uh, you can get this. It's going to be October 7th in Europe, October 9th in North America. And it brings together Uncharted Drake's Fortune, Uncharted 2 Among Thieves, Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception. On one PS4 collection, of course, it's only the single-player campaigns. You won't be able to do any of the multiplayer stuff. The one multiplayer thing you will get is beta access to the Uncharted 4 multiplayer beta which will begin later this year uh it's been remastered by blue point games you've got new achievements you've got 1080p 60 frame per second graphics better lighting textures and models there's also be supposed to be some gameplay improvements that we don't have specifics on i imagine they're going to spend a little time talking about that at the sony press event in uh, just a couple weeks so confirming the news and rumors and all that um i kind of think that this is interesting in the sense that <clears throat> I think the timing of it is actually pretty appropriate. For, for a second, I was thinking about hitting them with a baseball bat over the fact that, you know, I mean, like, you know, PS4 remasters, that was the first <laughs> year the PS4 was out. Like, now we're on to actual games. But I think in the lead up to Uncharted 4, this actually makes a lot of sense. And I mean, there's zero possibility that I don't own this. Zero. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And, you know, in fairness, that whole kind of. Uh, you know, we we we're we're accepting of HD remasters maybe in that first year or two because we see that as like okay, that's that's a way to get us maybe content that you know we either didn't try or something where they don't you know have to create a, a completely new game, but we can still mm-hmm. see some of the benefits of the new hardware. Yada yada yada. I I actually think that's the wrong way in a way to look at it. It's basically it's like look, are these are, are these good games that would benefit from? Um, you know, yeah. whatever features are being added. So in this case, you look at like a game like Uncharted where it had, you know, this, um, these just amazing graphics, but, or, you know, like for, for its generation. Oh, yeah, for its time, it was amazing. Yeah. Exactly. But, you know, maybe had uh, yeah, really, really a, a good. little bit lower frame rate, you know, maybe had uh, a little lower resolution, you know, things like that. Just things right. that you maybe, you know, could miss some of the amazing uh, design and artwork and things like that that went right. in went into it um game mechanics too you know i mean that was a big thing going from one to two everybody talked about the well i mean just you know the bullet sponge bad guys and all that kind of thing and they really they really addressed that with with two and and giving people body armor as opposed to you know a guy wearing a wife beater taking 12 headshots to kill (laughs) exactly and i mean you you look at something like uh like the last of us which is you know of course same same developer and probably a very similar uh, concept as to what they'll be doing, which is basically just making the game look the best that it kind of can, yeah. you know, and uh, or in this case, games. And I, I think 
if you were going to right now, like, you know, somebody had never played uh, anything from the last console generation and they wanted to get into uh, something, I think there are a lot of these collections that would be a great way for someone to step into it, pay, you know, one price and get this really just amazing collection of games. Yeah. Uh, and for fans that like the games a lot and want, want an or excuse, I guess, to go back and play them, uh, it, again, another There's good no reason better to do one. It. Exactly. Like, I'll be honest, I played I played a little bit of the first Uncharted, but I didn't really get too much into the second or third one. Mm-hmm. Not because I didn't think they looked interesting, just, you know, whatever. Not just exactly for whatever your, reason, didn't really pick them up. Yeah, not your uh, You know, if this is, you know... Uh, fifty bucks, or you know, like I think because didn't, they didn't sell them at fifty nine, did they? Didn't they sell them at like a little bit of a discount, uh, like, like I, the Last of Us remake? And whatnot? I was thinking they were sixty, but maybe uh, maybe I, it was. I, maybe I, I'm I thinking didn't of get the, that one, so I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's okay. Maybe I'm thinking of another like Capcom remake or something. But anyway, um, I like even at sixty bucks for three games, you know, for for three really well regarded games and an excuse to kind of get caught up on it before, uh, you know, four comes out. I think. Uh, I think that's a great way to do it. I think it works out pretty good for us. I think it works out pretty good for them. They're going to, I mean, basically you were going to buy two games from them instead of one. And like I said, there's no chance I don't have this. I'm, I'm yeah. super excited. And, and you know, it, it's, it, you know, some people would say it's like a double dip in a way, you know, like some people, you know, like they're just trying yeah. to get more money out of you. I mean, if, Hey, yes, they are, if but I'm getting something that I'm willing to give you, my money. And you up don't for. have to do it. You know, you, it's right. like you, I don't know if you know this, you don't have you to. are in complete control of whether you buy this game or not. So if you have no interest in it, don't buy it. Unless you know? you're me, in which case you have to buy it. Well, that is true. But you have no self control. No, I, I, I really don't. Um, so moving Your on to the next story <laughs> makes that very clear. X nay, at least report a um, what? No, it's so much your police report. The thing that talks about all the oh, times you that you went to a, the anyway, uh, all the times that we went to Steam. And anyway, <laughs> Microsoft has announced, as many people expected them to do, a new SKU for the Xbox One, which will carry one terabyte of storage upgraded from the 500 gigabytes of the current model and will also ship with the much rumored new controller that's got the three and a half millimeter headphone jack um like the uh, dualshock 4 has got so you no longer need the you no longer need like what do they call that adapter kit uh, that allowed you to plug in the uh oh the uh the fuck you over kit right that one yep. You no longer have to have that. You can use the, you can use, I imagine, a wide selection of, of cell phone and PC headsets that terminate in the tip ring ring or tip ring sleeve sleeve, uh, connector. (laughs) <laughs> That'll plug into that three and a half millimeter jack. I actually have a YouTube video called Why the Headphone Port is the DualShock 4's Best Feature. Talking about how awesome this uh, this works on the uh, the PS4. I imagine it's going to uh, work really well on the Xbox One as well. Price point's going to be the same, $400. And that'll be available on June 15th. So basically the day that... Uh, is that, is that, that That's the day their press event is on, isn't it? I believe so. Uh, I'm going to check and, that out. And I guess, out. I mean, have they, because I will say, this isn't confirmed, is it? Uh, yeah, well, I, and maybe it is. And by the time you read no, this, no, it probably will No, no, this, 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 is, this is a rumor. This was spotted on Amazon. Yeah. And then. Because the page is actually taken down. Yeah, because they take, they've taken the page down now. But I, th- but I think at this point, we can call this all but confirmed. I, I think you're probably right. I do, I do think they, like. And I know you know this happens every generation to some degree. Although it does seem to be rapidly accelerated with the Xbox One, yeah, is they're just like drastic need to make you feel bad about having just you know having bought an Xbox One <laughs> because they're constantly bringing out a version that is closer to what you originally wanted for less money or or at least you know the same amount or less, yeah. You know, and I, I will say there is a certain amount of me. This is the this is probably the only first time in any console ever that I've sort of felt a little bit pissed off because we're not. I mean, we're not what, not even two years, and they're they're going to have you know gone from five hundred dollars down to. I mean, hell, you can buy systems now for three fifty. You right. know, pretty regularly. Um, this system is going to be you know four hundred. It's going to have twice the storage space that the original had. It's going to have the controller that everybody felt like they should have what they should have done to begin with, and right. not have to sell the stupid adapter for an extra twenty five bucks or thirty bucks, whatever it is. Yeah. And 
you know, and it, you don't, you're not buying connect, you know, it's it, part of me is glad that they are sort of recognizing the things that they needed to fix and fixing them. Yep. Part of me is a little irritated in a way that it's happening so quickly as a early adopter, you know, it's like somebody that bought one, uh, at launch, but you know, it, it is what it is. I think if you haven't got an Xbox one yet already, that's a great excuse is a good time to get one. Yep. Um, so, uh, so I, I, I totally understand why they're doing it. It also sort of seems like they're, you know, they're, they are probably doing these changes more quickly because, you know, this is the first time they've really, since, since the Xbox One, you know, generation that they've really been getting competition from Sony, you know, f- for basically ever since the PS3 launch, you know, the 360 still dominated it in sales, you know, at past that initial sort of bump yeah. at the very beginning. Right. Uh, it really, the, it, it, you know, the 360 just got ahead and stayed ahead that whole generation. And the PS4 has, has basically been doing that now, although I think, uh, Xbox One has kept much closer mm-hmm. to it. Um, thanks in, uh, all part to all the, uh, changes they've done to, you know, uh, not making the connect mandatory, fixing kind of the, uh, the, the downgraded performance because of the connect. Um, and then changes like this where they're kind of, you know, fixing the, the sort of uh, issues that I think a lot of gamers want, uh, you know, it's it's a good sign at least that Microsoft is headed in the right direction now. I just wish they'd done it maybe a year or two sir, sooner, but you know. Yeah, I, I think that uh, I, I think I think that's a good point. And the, the thing that I was going to say is, I can remember I I can remember you know back when we were really getting excited to pick up a PS4 on release date and you know we were there at midnight and all that kind of stuff and then yeah. you did the same for the xbox one yeah uh but the thing that i was thinking is you know there were tons of people that are like you know i'm going to wait until at least a year after this thing comes out and they get all the kinks worked out and the bugs and they actually implement all the features that they talked about during the reveals and everything yeah. and i was just kind of thinking <laughs> it's like you know actually those people might have had the right idea oh i mean <laughs> don't get me wrong they actually probably do have the right idea but you know Things that are fixed, like with with the, like what you just said, bugs, kinks, things like that. Yeah. That to me though is things that still apply to you, even if you're an early adopter. You pay a little bit more, you get the system up front. They maybe save a little bit of money. They fix those kinks. What I don't like is basically like hardware changes, like where you, you know, have like, to buy a new s- console in order like, to kind of get the, f- the the new stuff. Exactly. Like yeah. you know, you can change the hard drive in an Xbox One, but it's not you know, it's not quite as easy it is and say like a ps4 um you know essentially you'd have to i mean you can yeah. and you can do an well, external can, can, you know everybody you says one of these like, oh, new controllers can you buy like like 50 bucks i'm sure you'll be able to like i don't i don't know that they've gone on sale i will i'm i know they haven't gone on sale yet but i don't know yeah. that they're not going to go on sale maybe the same day this system comes out because that will become the default you know the the you know the yeah general controller i'm sure Moving but you forward. know like it's just one of those things like you know you kind of like to feel you you just you kind of like to feel good about your purchase, especially if you've paid more than the other you know the other people that are getting in on it. Of course, right. you know the or, uh, you, or you've gotten yeah. less, like a smaller hard drive or you know whatever. Smaller hard drive, you have to put up you know you you not have to put up. But, I mean you you had to pay for Connect when you didn't really want to, but you thought well there that's probably Microsoft is committed yeah. to Connect, so it's that's, not going anywhere. So I might as well buy it. That, oh, that's true. It went somewhere. That's yeah. that's probably the big one. The fact that you know that system was a hundred dollars more at launch. Because yeah. of Connect, and they've basically done a complete 180 on Connect. Yeah, which we I think all if it had been four hundred dollars without Connect and everything else the same, I wouldn't even care. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you're, it, you're it right. still stings a little. You're, you're right. I, I, I totally see that. So anyway, fuck Microsoft, <laughs> a bunch of fuck. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> what else were we gonna say? So yeah, uh, just to but just to come back and and say for for the for the sake of clarification, this is rumor at this point. Well, yeah. the, the details that were pulled from the Amazon page while it was live was $400 price point releasing on June 15th, which is the day that the Microsoft press event happens at 9 a.m. Pacific time or whatever. And, so, it, and it seems, like you said, it seems very, you know, the chances of this it's becoming pretty, true pretty is likely. pretty good. Yeah. What also is pretty likely is Brent needing someone to hand him some paper towels because XCOM 2 has been announced. Tony, <sighs> hand me the paper towels. Okay, we're... Um, talking over the internet so i can't reach you but um this is uh, as many people know one of my this is one of my favorite games of last generation i'll go ahead and say it's one of my favorite games of all time i fucking love xcom 
Wow. XCOM Enemy Unknown. I knew you liked it a lot. I didn't know you were going to put it up there with your all-time games. That, that's, it that's is impressive. fucking amazing, dude. It, it is. I mean, there are a few games that I have played through, it, it, as far as modern games. Modern games. Yeah, yeah. There are a few modern games I have played through as many as many times as I've played through this game. I mean, XCOM is one of those games that I could sit down. I mean, I couldn't do it in a single day anymore, you know, just because I'm obviously I have a little bit less free time with Z. A sure. little bit. And by a little bit, I mean a lot less free time <laughs> with Z. But... It is one of those games that there's almost never a time when I don't feel like playing it. Like, like if I, I could just be like scrolling through my list of games on Steam and be like, oh, XCOM, I'll play that for a couple of hours, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and the DLC pack for XCOM, the, you know, the Enemy Within stuff, which is, re- is really interesting because, uh, well, I'm getting ahead of myself, but the Enemy Within really is informing the story of XCOM 2. And then the other thing is uh, there's a there's a mod called the Long War for XCOM, like this fa- this community made mod that is mm-hmm. amazing. I mean, like fucking amazing what this mod does to the original game in terms of extending how long it takes to finish the game, all the things that you will do in that time, new weapon tiers, like like it just expands everything. Like everything about the game gets the volume turned up, uh, and I'm really actually wanting to play the game again with that mod. Anyhow. <laughs> Enough XCOM Enemy Unknown. XCOM 2 is on the way from 2K and Fraxis Games, of course. And what we know about the story from the, uh, from the announcement trailer is that it takes place 20 years in the future, 2035, in a scenario in which the aliens have successfully invaded Earth. But it's, it's like a soft invasion. And w- along, with, uh, along with the Advent faction... They have kind of taken over the population, and it's this. It's this. Uh, they, they're putting a very happy face on it, like, "Oh, we thank our avi- our alien overlords for coming down and, and saving us from ourselves, and that kind of thing." <laughs> and and you know, and the advent uh, the advent council is uh, you know we thank them for maintaining peace and prosperity through this transition, and you know all of this uh, all of this kind of stuff. It, it's it's all very happy, but there is a sinister you know, Orwellian oppressive overtone to what's going on. And, and XCOM, as we know them, they're now sort of the rebels fighting the empire. You know, they don't have the, the world's united resources to combat this threat. They're, uh, they're working on the sly. And so you're going to have to change your tactics because that, uh, that, that fundamentally changes how you can kind of approach your, uh, your strategy for deploying your troops and for spending your resources. Resource collection and management is now a much bigger deal. There's new enemy types. We've seen, uh, we've seen a, pretty, a pretty fearsome snake woman, which as I understand it is a throwback to the original, like the 96 XCOM, uh, which I have only dabbled in a little bit. I've got like that whole collection on Steam, but I just haven't, haven't played them uh, yet. But anyway, yeah. all kinds of interesting details and hopefully the same great, awesome, kick-ass turn-based gameplay of the original i could not be more excited <laughs> uh it does look cool i, uh, I you're never dead got to me the you're dead to me tony <laughs> i uh, i thought the trailer looked interesting um you know i never i never really got into the mm-hmm. the, uh, the original but uh I, it's it's not my type of game though just the, the type yep, of gameplay it you. is you know which i, I know you really enjoy and, and to, to be frank it looks awesome i mean it really does it looks cool um i uh I, I hope that it ends up being everything you want it to be. They better hope it does which too. It apparently is because it's a new XCOM game. So. <laughs> I'm easy. I'm easy to please. Let's let's yeah. face it. <laughs> you give me a new XCOM game and a cinnamon roll, I'm good. Welcome to the clubhouse, everybody. Grab a chair. Gather round. Get an adult beverage or a non-adult beverage, as your preference may be. Or an adult diaper. Uh, I tell you what, um, there are days, Tony. There are days when I'm just like, you know what? I'm ready to, I'm, I'm ready to just give up the fight. Go ahead and give me that. Never mind. Um, <laughs> the point is that uh, we're going to have ourselves a, a little roundtable discussion here. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and look at the poll results from last week's topic discussion which of course was the games of e3 tony would you please share those poll results yes so our question was which imaginary game are you the most excited about to see revealed at e3 2015 these of course are games that uh we we sort of 
I guess hope and 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 believe have to be maybe in development at some in some way, shape, or form. But uh, don't really expect to see. But we would love to see them uh, at uh, this E3. I agree. And uh, it's a little surprising. Uh, we have a tie, a dead heat for, tie. F- exactly a, a a tie for uh, second place, last place. However you want to look at it, uh, and that is between Half Life Three and The Last Guardian. Uh, so uh, that only leaves the number one choice in the game that everybody hopes is being made and that we might possibly see at E3, which is Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm pretty sure Brent went ahead and just voted. Like 17 times. 70 times you That's know, right. on here just, just to get that up Super there. Super admin account, baby. <laughs> That's right. 26%, Which, uh, 26% was, the, yeah. was the tie between Half-Life and Last Guardian. 48% with Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've been correct I'm a little on. surprised by that. I, I really thought Half-Life 3 or The Last Guardian would maybe have... I, I don't know. I guess I would have almost thought that they would have had kind of more excitement for them over Red Dead. Not not a not a uh, quibble with Red Dead. I just I don't I didn't know that it was quite You're as damn uh, well right. It's not a quibble with Red Dead. Go ahead and say that oh again, just so I hear it. Uh, I didn't think that it might be a quibble with uh, Red Dead Redemption. All too, right, all right, which uh, is a shitty you, game. All right, so here's my theory. Okay, well, there's two things I need to say on this. Number one, somebody uh, correctly corrected me and said you should stop calling it Red Dead Two because. Red Dead Redemption was Red Dead 2, because obviously there was the there was the PS2 game Red Dead Revolver. Sure, sure. I'm still going to keep calling it Red Dead 2. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to say <laughs> is that, because <laughs> I'm just stubborn, uh, the other thing I was going to say is that I think that perhaps the reason that, that, that Red Dead has such a, a wider margin on those other two games is that... I believe people feel like there's actually a pretty good chance that Red Dead Redemption, the sequel, is going to get announced sometime soon, as opposed to Half-Life mm. 3 and Last Guardian, which I think are a little bit more... I, I, th- I think those are a little bit more pie in the sky. But there, there's been there's been rumors and some statements coming out of out of Rockstar of, you know, oh, we're, you know, we're going to have some exciting stuff to announce soon on, you know, like... I, somebody asked them. I, I think it was like late last year. Somebody asked them something about uh, you know w- w- what what plans do you have for the Red Dead Redemption franchise? Like, oh, we'll we'll have some exciting news on that sometime next year. You know, like that kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah. I, I guess maybe it's just a little bit more of a uh, of a real possibility in people's minds. Perhaps that's why. I guess so. I guess it just seems like you know Half Life Three has been talked about literally since half life two yeah yeah i mean you know and so and and the last guardian we've actually you know out of both of those that's something we've actually seen something from you know like even even though that's been a long fucking time ago we saw something from it unfortunately Um, i don't know seen just how bad things were behind the scenes since we saw that trailer. yeah so i guess i guess it's not surprising it just just on the surface uh it caught me off guard a little you know something that caught me off guard a little tony segue transition yeah (laughs) <laughs> is this this news story that dropped into my RSS reader last week that said, quote, new Steam refund policy can be used for any reason, end quote. <laughs> I was like, you're kidding me. And uh, and sure enough, as, as many of you are aware at this point, Valve consulting no one, which they all, you know, everybody always bitches when Valve does something without consulting anyone. But uh, <laughs> Valve has updated the refund policy on steam and their new policy now states that quote you can request a refund for nearly er any purchase on steam for any reason maybe your pc doesn't meet the hardware requirements maybe you bought a game by mistake maybe you played the title for an hour and just didn't like it it doesn't matter end quote uh it not only applies to games also dlc uh in-game purchases pre-purchases bundles and uh, and even even funds that you add to your Steam wallet, you can you can get uh, you can get refunded now. Um, let me see what else would be important to say here. Okay, well th- there are there are a couple of uh, there are a couple of particulars here. Um, the refund window, you have to request the refund within the first two weeks of the original purchase, mm-hmm. and you must have played the game for less than two hours. But. And- but if you fall outside of those parameters, 
then you can still ask for a refund, yeah. and Valve will consider, yeah, I guess, on a case by case basis. Sure. Um, I have to say that I, I'm surprised. I mean, we've talked about we've talked about uh, Lauren and I, and I, I, I think we've even talked about this on Battlecry back in the day. How we we felt like the the digital download era needed to sort of have a customer service policy that has has evolved along with the distribution model. And Lauren and I specifically have talked many times about Amazon customer service. And it's like, look, you know, like everybody's going to stop complaining if you just get on your customer service the way that Amazon does. Where it's like, what, you didn't like it? Here's your money back. Here's a mailing label. Send it to us. Don't worry about it. You know, it's just all about keeping you happy as a customer. Like, like when they get to that point, like nobody's going to care. And I feel like Valve has taken a, uh, a pretty big step in that direction. So, and, and you know, interestingly enough, I, within, I don't know, with, within the first six months of owning my PC, I had this exact thing happen to me. I was trying to get set up for DayZ and I bought Arma 2 uh, and hadn't, I hadn't done my research properly and didn't realize I needed to get Arma 2 with the expansion Operation Arrowhead uh, mm-hmm. in order to run DayZ. I bought Arma 2. I emailed Valve and I said, hey, uh, you know, I made this mistake. I bought Arma 2. I needed to get the I need to get the pack with Operation Airhead. Could you refund me for this so I can go buy that? And they basically said, "Listen, we don't do refunds on games, but since you're a recent customer and this is, you know, this is, uh, you know, an extenuating circumstance, we'll do it this one time." And I was like, "Oh, well, yeah. gee, I'm, you know, I'm really glad that uh, that they did that for me. I'll never make that mistake again." But I mean, really, like this would be the much better thing. I mean, I'm sure people do that all the time. I'm sure people have mistakes all the time. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you do this? So. This is the thing I want to talk about today because, and, and we can talk about it in specific relation to Steam. That's fine, but I want to I want to kind of take a broader view, and I want to think about all right. So Steam has taken this step and done this, and there's a bit of controversy over it, we, which we can get into. But Steam has taken this step. What does this mean for gaming overall? Could we see a decision like this putting pressure on Microsoft and Sony, as an example, to? Take a take a similar kind of track with their digital goods through their storefronts. GOG, uh, they, they've got their clientcy. Uh, they've got their clientcy. They've got their client GOG Galaxy. Uh, they they had a better refund policy than Steam. It was a little bit different because their stuff's DRM free. So even if you get a refund, you can still play the game. Uh, but the fact uh, of the matter is that I think that GOG has probably been a big factor in putting this pressure on steam to do something different. Maybe it'll spread to the wider industry. And I, I think if it did, that'd be a really good thing. Um, so there's a lot of different directions we can go with it from, uh, with this, Tony, where do you want to start? W- what about this interests you the most you think? Um, so I don't know. I, I gotta be honest. I don't know that I am quite as, um, I don't know how the word to put it exactly. No, it's not like I'm not quite as excited. I think, from a consumer standpoint, from the the end user yeah. standpoint, I I think I mean let's be honest, it's about as good as it could be. You yeah, know? I mean you're you're given the opportunity to. Uh, if, if anything, I would say down- the people who are complaining about this are saying like, "Ooh, like you know, this is kind of bad for developers." It seems like almost too good yeah. for consumers by by comparison. And I kind of that's that's sort of where I'm coming from because I think the only thing that I get frustrated with and I think this goes to a lot of aspects of just our our world these days, our life these days is that right. people think, you know, the sort of old adage of the consumer, you know, is always right is like that that if you live by that then it'll always work. And the the fact of the matter is there's a that, lot of ain't that simple. It's not that simple. I mean, that, yeah. that is a huge part of it. If you just do stupid shit to your customers all the time, yes, you will eventually go away, you know? Um, I mean, well, in theory, unless you're propped up by, you know, <laughs> a, a government agencies and things like that that keep you going even when you're not doing a good if job. If you're one of the job. lucky few that has been selected to win. Exactly. But but not not going down that road today. But the, the whole my, – my first thought when I heard about this is I said, man, I don't think that they will continue doing this for very long. Okay, okay, that's interesting. So my my first thought on, on it is because you look at something like when they talked about the uh, what was that like paying for uh, paying for mods that happened not too long ago. Yeah. You know, the announcement was made, I think, similar to this fashion, like with quite a bit of excitement, like, you know, hey, 
you know, you can now pay for mods. This is going to be great. You know, those mods that you really enjoy. Well, that's now certainly you can, how they represented it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and, and I think, again, this is they, they come down this road of like, hey, this is great. Now those times that you yeah. uh, purchased a game and then realized that it wouldn't run on your system or, you know, you got an hour into it and you, you, you just don't like it. Now you don't have to get, you know, stuck with it. You can get your money back. Um, the first... The, the the first couple pages of of uh, comments I read on the first story I read about this mm-hmm. were just how this is bullshit. Like I just requested a game that I bought three years ago that I've you know only played for eight hours and they didn't do anything for me. And there's like ten or twenty comments like that, like people that are already to my mind trying to sort of abuse the system, right. like you know sort of saying I want to get back all the you know money that I don't feel was spent well previously yeah you know and it's like look that's that's not what really this is for you still need to make good buying decisions right you don't need to just be i'm just going to buy this and then i'll figure out later if it's the right thing for me i mean you should still i don't think you should buy it unless you truly are planning on keeping it if you if you like it it sounds like a lot of cases people are kind of kind of trying to in my mind abuse the system as opposed to saying hey that's great Here's a game coming out next week that I'm excited about. I'm going to go ahead and buy it and, you know, if it turns I'll out make it's not sure all that. that first Yeah, I'll make sure in that first 2 hours that I I that I am satisfied with my purchase and then I'll make that that decision. It's like I don't know, it's like this weird sort of thing that I do think that we live in a world where if you give somebody an inch, they will take a mile. And so that's why I kind of think that I think Steam would have been better off announcing the 2 week return time frame and the 2 hour play time. And not mentioning the and 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 also on case by case basis because let's be honest with you if somebody's mad about their thing just like the situation you had or not mad but just you know like oh I need to do something different you're going to call they said they'll take care of it there you go but announcing hey and by the way if it's outside of that just let us know and we'll try to make it work for you right I think that that's just gonna it's gonna be so difficult because then you're gonna see like basically chargebacks to all these de- you know developers that have you know, sold games and basically made decisions based on financial things that are coming back. Like, Hey, right. we know it's day, day one, our game came out and we sold, you know, a hundred thousand copies. And then, two, you know, two days later, they, like, you wow, know, we refunded 75,000 copies, 70, 70,000 of those, you know, got returned, right. you know, and, and now those plans that we've been working on and making, you know, it's like mm-hmm. there, there really does need to be a point. And the other thing that I guess I do have is a lot of people are sort of saying how, this now because we basically saying like that you know digital distribution did not have a way to handle this before as if to say consoles and things like that did i mean to be honest with you once a game is open you can't return it on a console yeah we're talking about physical media at a retail store exactly like if you buy you go out and buy a copy of you know uh you know Anything. Splatoon on you know fucking disc and you open it up, you cannot return it to that store unless it's defective and you're exchanging it for exact copy of that same game. You can't. Right. I mean, I've worked retail for you know years and it's a, it's a I've huge deal. I've turned these it's people an, down. Yeah, I mean, so you. I mean, because you have to. Yeah. You just can't because it's it's unfortunately that's that's well, the way it there works. There are those people that'll you know I mean there were people like us who would go buy games or rent games back you know when there were video stores that made the incredible mistake of renting pc titles go home copy the discs install it and then turn take it back and be like yeah you know like this didn't really run on my pc can i get my seven dollars back yeah yeah i mean, I mean there, there's, there's I, people I, like us in the world tony we know how this and works. i mean that's the thing like that's not even that easy to do on current consoles no, eventually no, it's much, that you it's much harder to, get to do it. now but but the whole point is it's it seems like a little bit of a false kind of concept that like you know now finally digital you know gaming is getting uh, something that somebody else has kind of already had when they didn't have that. I mean, you've always had that sort of thing of you're committing to buying a product. Right. And the the part of it that the way that it's worked in the past is you buy a product, you use that product, and if it – if it doesn't do what it says it's supposed to do, that that's where I think gaming is is going to have a tough, you know, maybe tough time. But let's just say, aside from your happiness with the game, right. you buy the game, it works, then, and you don't like it, well, then you just don't support maybe the next game from that developer or the next game from that company. Right. You know, that's kind of how it's worked in the past. And in general, we've had some decent growth in the gaming industry over the last 30 years with, with that, that method. Right. I'm afraid now... 
you might see people taking less chances on games because they're like, look, if we can't handle all of these, you know, a ton of returns on a game. So, you know, it's it, that that game might be great, but, you know, we normally have so this many this many percentage of people buy it, you know, sight unseen or whatever you want to say. And, you know, yeah, I'm sure there are people that are unhappy with it, but, you know, hopefully we make more people happy with it and they buy our next game. But we understand that there's going to be a certain amount of people that pay that pay for it that maybe don't like it. But we still rely on those funds to, you know, get us to make the next game and hopefully make it better, make everybody like it or whatever. You know, there's the other uh, just, sorry, real, real quick because yeah. it ties to that. And then, then I'll kind of let you um, uh, speak, speak to what you think. The, the the only upside that I really do sort of see to it personally is that I really, if this does become the norm and everybody starts doing it, I hope this finally fixes the pay, pay, paying for a broken game model that we yes. have in droves yes, now. Yes, that, that I mean, was exactly where, where I was going. Exactly. Now, the problem is... I don't necessarily know that it will. Now I just think we'll have this this model where people are buying a game, returning it, buying it, returning it. Every time there's an update put out for a game, you know, going back and forth. But in a perfect world, I hope this kind of means like, you know, look, if somebody can, you know, return our game in two weeks, we can't ship it out broke as hell like it has mm-hmm. been in the past. And I know that's what a lot of people I think are thinking like, you know, okay, this will if I can just return your game, you're going to make sure that it's right, you know, out the gate. I just I think we're so far down the road where people are paying for early access to games and, you know, paying for games that they they realize that there are going to be features yeah. and, and patches and fixes down the road. I just I don't know. I feel like it's I the the thing. The last thing I say, I just I don't I don't really see this lasting in, in the exact form that they've laid it out now. I think that they will probably make some pretty drastic changes to it sooner or later because this is already the second update like they they did what was just a couple weeks ago when they announced the return policy and it was only like two days wasn't it or something and you couldn't have you could just if the game was installed you could no longer return it like but if you hadn't downloaded it yet like it was a pre-order and it hadn't been installed yet or something like that they they had a policy as which you could return stuff but it was essentially you could return it up till the point that it was playable so like installed on your computer ready to go You know, and and then they've fairly recently changed it to this, which just makes me think that they're willing to change quickly. You know, d- depending on what they need to do. Yeah. So I don't know. What 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 what? Uh, well, there's there's a couple of there's a couple of things about this that are are inter- are interesting. First, I want to mention uh, another article that is going to be in the show notes for you guys to check out from PC Gamer. Uh, it's called "Could Steam's Refund Policy Have a Weird Effect." on game design it's by tyler wilde who i'm almost positive uh was the name of a hair metal band in the 80s but anyway (laughs) the point is that in that article he or she raises some interesting uh, just some interesting hypotheses on what might change about about game design to react to this for example will developers will they sort of put a lot of effort into making sure that the first two hours of their games are really, really good. <laughs> I did not even think about that. That's fucking brilliant. <laughs> at, you know, just as an example. And, and, yeah. and it also does, it, like, it takes a look at how this could affect the developers, how it could make things a little bit less stable for them, as, as you were talking about. Um, I'm more optimistic about, about this than you are, but that applies to almost everything in reality. Just about everything, um, yeah. But I think that... I think that number one, Valve has needed to address their customer service situation for a long time. Valve has acknowledged that they need to do a lot better on that. Uh, they've acknowledged it recently. And, you know, Lauren and I on this show, I, I, I think we said words to the effect of if Valve would just hire somebody from Amazon that works in Amazon customer service and implement those kinds of policies at Valve, Valve would do great. Like, they would really, really do great. And I feel like, in a way, they have done that in, in part. Like, like, this doesn't necessarily cover everything, but I feel like this is, this is a big part of it. And I, I, I really am happy that they've, they've taken this step to try and address some of, the, some of these things. I mean, 
the fact is that mm. you know with dealing with a company like Amazon, which I probably shop at Amazon more than I mean the only place that I probably shop more than Amazon is a, is the grocery store. And yeah. one of the one of the aspects of the Amazon customer service story that that really keeps me loyal to them as a customer is the fact that Amazon's policy is basically if you don't really like this, you can send it back to us provided that it's not Provided it's not like Blu-ray movies and video games and things like that. But, I mean, I've ordered tons of things from them that I'm just like, yeah, hey, you know what? Like, I don't really like yeah. this. I'm sending it back. It's like, well, you know, why are you sending it back? It's like, you know what? It's just not what I expected. And and that's a perfectly valid reason to return it to them. So, I guess that there, there's a part of me that kind of feels like I want parity with, with, uh, with, with, with video games. I want parity in that experience with video games. And the thing with Steam is... You know, as opposed to like GOG, where I can I can do that. Like I can I can download a game, I can play it a little bit, and be like, you know what? I don't really like this. Steam can take that game back. You know, they can remove my access from it. Uh, as opposed to like you know like buying a movie on Blu-ray that I watch, don't really like, but I make a copy of it. I I, I rip the disc or whatever, and then take it back. You know, Valve can to, to a reasonable well, degree, Valve can make sure that that doesn't happen. Can, can I jump in just for a second? Because this, yeah, this is, I guess, where I, I sort of think, I feel like I see the difference between the two. Because I agree with you. I I don't buy nearly to the extent that you do from Amazon, but I actually do, I have more and more because right. of that very reason. Because it is easy, because frankly, you don't you don't have to search around. You don't have to maybe get something that may or may not work. You get exactly what you want. You get it pretty quickly. It's usually the cheapest or close to the cheapest you know, price, everything. Right. The reason I think there is a difference between things like media versus things like a product, like mm-hmm. an item, physical item, physical goods, is because even though they can take, say, Steam can take back your access to a game, they can't take back any amount of enjoyment or the experience of that game. Okay. So, like, for instance. And why, and why is that significant? Well, because that's what you're paying for. Right, like you're so. So, for instance, a better example. Let's take because uh, a game, I think, can be maybe a little bit different. But let's just make up maybe a little easier example of a movie. So, like, let's say they gave you the the option of like you finish watching a movie. Did you like that movie or did you not like that movie? If you didn't like that movie, we'll refund you. Well, you've right. still seen the movie. You well, know what if it was? But what if it was limited? Like, what if like you walked out after the first twenty minutes and you're like, you know what? I hate this movie. Could I have my Could I have my money back, please? I mean, I, I, I see said, what well, you're saying you know what? to you're some the, degree. You're but in the I, first 20 minutes. Yeah, we'll sure. give you your money back. I, I see what you're saying to some degree, but I do think that I think that there is a difference between. I think there is a, a still a difference between like you get to experience that game. Like I'll, I'll be honest with you, a perfect example is back in the day when people used to do demos all the time. Right. There were a couple of demos that I would just keep on, like say my 360 or my PC or whatever. Because oh yes, same here. To same be honest here. with you, I would play that, and that was enough. Like I'd play it for you know mm-hmm. 15, 20, 30 minutes. You know, every you but, know yeah. couple of days because I got I got what I needed. It was just it. enough, and they got nothing out of that. You know, like right. so I got some enjoyment out of that game. They got nothing. Tetris I could see, on my Roku right now. I've got the demo for Tetris on my Roku, which Z loves to watch me play. Yeah. She'll bring me the little Roku remote and and like you know like want me to play Tetris because she just like loves to watch the blocks fall or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not paying for that fucking thing. I mean, yeah. you know, it's you know, I don't know how much it is. That's, I, that's it, a dollar. It, okay, well, maybe I'll um, pay for no, it. I'm then. Just but anyway, <laughs> no, no, I'm not joking. It's, it's like an EA game. I was like, oh, they're charging five bucks for this. Or, but you know, yeah, whatever. you're probably right. But even if you played, you know, less than two hours of a game and said, okay, yeah, I don't. I don't want to play this anymore. You still have had two hours into that game. I mean, you still have had two hours of some form of, of, of an experience, whether it's good or bad. Now, I mean, you know, you could say like, well, what about the crappy games you play and you're not happy with? Well, I mean, that's life. What about the, ch- the crappy, you know, meal that you get at a certain place? Like, if it's really bad, speak to the manager. If they don't want to give you your money back, then go, go to another place like that. I think that's an option. And I, I know Steam is trying to do something in a sense of like, you know something I think akin to like what what uh, Amazon has done, but I would point to something like, um, for instance, somewhere like Walmart. So right. Walmart, biggest retailer in in uh, I think North America, but at least in in uh, the United States in, in the United States, and they used to have like the most basically what Amazon does now. 
Yeah. If you bought you could, something you could there, buy shit ever, at Target and buy, return it to Walmart, they would take it. They would. They would take it. They would take shit that you hadn't even bought from them if it was just something they that they sold. Yeah. You know, and the fact of the matter is, they did that for quite a while until eventually it got to the point where they they could not financially. It did not make sense to them. There yeah. was this line of. Too many people taking advantage of it, of, of basically people like never, for instance, like a vacuum cleaner is a great example. I remember hearing stories of people and I don't work for Walmart, but I mean, I've, I've heard stories through other friends where they would like buy one, use it for like four years, go back, return it, get another one, use that one for three or four years, t- take it right. back. Like basically never having paid for a product, you know I mean? Like they, they just right. keep getting a new one. They paid for the first one. They paid for the first one, but I mean, let's be honest. That's you know, if they're constantly able to return it, they're not even. They barely even paid for the first one because they're constantly able right. to get their money back towards something else. That's where a video game business model would would benefit them because they didn't want to buy a vacuum; they wanted to subscribe to a vacuum. Exactly. No. <laughs> but but, <laughs> so I mean, anyway. but I but I guess my point is, I think that there is there is a really. And I think it is pretty delicate balance between good customer service and and bad being, business practice. Well, and and being a bad business model. Like there has to be yeah. a line that they can still make it profitable. And I, you know, we're, we're in this day and age now where people just think that anybody that's profiting from something is is essentially bad. The fact of the matter is, that's the only reason you have the cool stuff that you like these days is Very because true. it is profitable at some level. Yeah. And so you have to think in certain terms. That's why, I mean, let's be honest, that's why we started Epic Battle Cry. We want to talk sort of about the business, or at least, you you know, I know you and I have a big interest in the business side of those things. Yes. And 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 the decisions people make, are they good or bad decisions? And, we, and I look at them a lot of times from that their perspective like look if it's a great decision for the customer but it means that you as a company won't be able to function uh, you know a few years down the road if you don't if you keep doing it that way then is that a good decision for the customer because eventually your games will go away you know and they may think well that's fine somebody else will replace them but you know okay i I think i think there's a i think it's i don't think it's quite as just easy as saying like you know hey this is great so you know it'll just always be great there's a line and i don't know that we know what it is yet i think steam will find that line and tweak their policy to work with it to me until that happens i don't really see any of the others getting behind it i think everybody else will basically wait and see how it works for steam Mm-hmm. And then, so let them, to me, it's let not them just work out the kinks. Exactly. Well, and it's also not just that thing like, hey, Steam's doing it. It's a great idea. So, how long will it take for everybody else to do it? It's like, hey, Steam's doing it. Let's see if it's a great idea. If it is, maybe we'll all start doing it. So, I, right. I think there's a big di- you know difference there. Well, I certain I certainly agree with you in the sense that to everything there is a threshold. Yeah, no doubt about that. Uh, the, the, there's a point. The, there's a point past which this starts to harm to, to harm the company to harm the company. And to harm the company. I agree that as a customer, I don't, I don't want that to happen. You know, like I don't want Steam to destabilize themselves to the point where they go away because I like buying games to them. Now, the the fact that you talked about a demo is kind of interesting because I think that's basically what this is. What what basically Steam has done is they have instituted a demo policy uh, without really involving developers. I, I think that's essentially what they've done here. They've basically given people a window of of time. And a window of playtime, and said, "We will allow you to, we will allow you to experience the game within this window. And if you don't like it, then you can get your money back." And you know, the go, the, the movie example you were talking about, I thought was interesting because, I mean, frankly, there have been movies where twenty minutes in, I was like, you know what, this is pretty bad. And and I've thought about walking out. And the reason I don't walk out is because, well, fuck it. I paid for this, so I'm going to get my money's worth. I'll sit through the whole thing because I paid my money and there's no way to get it back. But if I had that option, I would have walked out after 20 minutes a few times. Mm. Do you not think you would have given a lot of movies a chance, though, more and maybe appreciated stuff that you no. might have walked out? No. 20 minutes the, crow, the Crow 2 does not get a chance, Tony. The Crow 2 In all seriousness, I know, you're, I know you're joking, but do you not think there are movies that in 20 minutes in, you may or may not have made the decision to leave that after sitting through them, you, you came around or you actually found out that maybe there were aspects of it you liked. I mean, I'll be honest, there's games that are like that, that I've, that are like I maybe started and wasn't like, eh, this is okay. And by the end it was great. So giving people an out two hours in it, again, I don't know that that's just flatly a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying it's not just blindly a great thing to just say like you have an easy out so nobody has to you know take a chance on anything longer than two hours but ghosts of mars tony 
Ghosts of Mars. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. That's here's okay. Here, that's a perfect example. I knew enough not to go to Ghost of Mars in the first place. <laughs> I was a better. I was a. I, I was, was a better, better consumer. consumer. I knew enough not to get give into that to begin with. You, well, you, you, though, you might have no, a point there. Um, but, but I'm not but, kidding though. That definitely knew not to go to that <laughs> but but the, the thing that i was going to say is like there there have been experiences that, that i've had where i mean it doesn't take you very long to realize ooh, this is going to really suck um but the the thing about the game business that that's specifically different that we haven't talked about yet is the fact that there are i mean i've bought games on steam that only last two hours you know yeah that's a good and, point yeah and so you know there are certainly i mean there's certainly going to be games where you um you could play the entire thing in two hours, and and then yeah, I, I didn't want this, and then you are, or I don't need to play it again. You know, like right. like maybe I did like it, but I'm like, hey, if I can get my money back, why? So yeah. there 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 are going to be. I, I agree with you that there probably are going to be tweaks to this because as opposed to movies where you're guaranteed about two hours of time, games you know can run Make the game you know yeah. from a couple of hours up to uh, you know dozens, hundreds of hours. Yeah. So I, I agree that that there's there's maybe a little bit of wiggle room there, and I do think that I do think that there is a there is a path here where I believe that Steam can find something that's beneficial to both parties. Personally, I think it would be a really really good thing for a company like Ubisoft specifically on the PC to get spanked over the fact that that they have they have problems with with games running well on PC. Yeah. I think that it would be a really good thing for something like Watch like I wish this policy would have been around when Watch Dogs came out. Uh because I would have got I mean me and a lot of other people who played that game on PC would have gotten our fucking money back because it did not take 2 hours to realize that that game ran terribly on the PC. And I think that, like, in a world where in a world where you can play that game for two hours, and be like, "Nope, this sucks. I want my money back, and I'll wait until Ubisoft fixes this, and then I'll come back and maybe take another look at it." I think that I think that's a really, really beneficial thing to consumers. Yeah. I think on the Ubisoft side, mm-hmm. I think that I think that it very well could change. In addition to some other things, but I think that very well could change. Uh, just how dedicated they are to making sure their game runs properly on that platform to begin on with. day one. Yeah. I, I, I do think that, that this could have an effect on developers doing that. Now, again, there's a threshold, and I do think that there's a point where people could begin to abuse it to a degree, and they could, you know, they could really, really optimize that first couple of hours, and then you know, things could kind of start to get wonky after that. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. But just as you're kind of talking about, like, maybe this thing needs to get adjusted one way to, you know, to be a successful business model, I think that you know, the needle can also move the other way uh, in order to make sure that you know, developers don't abuse the system. And and that's that's what essentially what we're talking about. Like I think that what we are what we are well, fundamentally I, saying is you're that, leaning towards developers abusing it. I guess well, I'm no, leaning I'm towards the other side. Either way. I think I'm just saying them, either way. Well, yeah. I think that what we're fundamentally saying here is that is that this, in, if this system is going to be sustainable, there needs to be there needs to be policy in place to try to discourage abuse from either camp. So I, I think just real quick, just while we're sitting here, so and I've got one other fairly, I think actually as major as this whole story point here in a second. But mm-hmm. first, though, I do think that maybe the easiest thing they could do is institute some sort of a, a either a limit to how many times you can do it. Like in a given like like in a year or something in like a that. year or a month right. or whatever it is. Or, and, well, and, and either it's like a set number, you know, whatever, which I think that might be more difficult or not as good, or they have it as a percentage of games you've bought in that period of time. So, like, you okay. know, say say that it is 25% or 30% or 50%, right. whatever the percentage is you think is fair. One out of, of every four games you can return. Yeah, 25%. So, so basically, like, you buy 10 games in a, uh, in a, in a given month, you're allowed two to three of these you know, returns without question. And then okay. beyond that, you know, it's still filling, fulfilling the, you know, within two hours, within the two weeks, whatever. But then past that, it is kind of a, you know, it's so basically they can't review. let someone abuse it. They can't let yeah. a, a end user abuse it. I think that would still fulfill that because, because I'll be honest with you, if you could just return every single thing you ever bought it, it, you know, w- w- you know, after playing it for, for a period of time, 
I just I think that that would be devastating in 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 so many terms to what games we get come out. I think people would think, oh, that'll make games better that come out. I think it would make games much more cookie cutter. You wouldn't get the choices we have now because people would make you know game companies would make much safer choices on games. But aren't Easier, they already they would doing make, that? I well, mean, but no, but I mean that's the thing. Doing that to a no, they, I mean you, you you we that's that was a few years ago. We have more choices in terms of alternative games and indie games and different types of games than we have ever had. And it's just and you're growing. worried that this could discourage that. You're, I think that it could because I yeah. think we're going we would be going back to that thing where now. They can sell games on so many different platforms, so many different ways. That's why indie games have become big. That's why the big companies have started making smaller games or different types of games because they can market them specifically to the people they you know that, that typically like those kind of games. Whereas before, they kind of had to have this huge marketing push. So the only thing they ever did was a new Assassin's Creed, a new you know Call of Duty, whatever it was, because they had they had one way to sell it and that was you know a big media blitz now they can do those things differently so i i I don't think you can say that now we don't have more choices in terms of types and kinds and and i mean some of the games that we have now people would not even recognize those as games back in the day i mean they're just they're they're totally it's just a totally different experience but anyway just so i i think that that could definitely make it worse if anything i mean like maybe you know maybe it is happening to a certain degree but it would make it worse in my opinion the thing that i do have a huge question about and maybe maybe the some stories out there talked to it but i hadn't the ones i've read i hadn't said anything how can steam do this like how can they make this decision like i can't imagine that they had wording in their agreements with the companies they've sold to or that they've uh, made deals with up to this date and oh, only now publishers. come out with this policy so, like, how does this work with, let, let's just take an Ubisoft or an EA or, you know, whoever it is. So, is 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 Steam taking the hit? Is there, Are they just saying, like, you know, okay, EA, you can still have your money. We're, we'll just take the hit on the $40 game we're returning. I, or, or I would is not it, imagine that's how it works. I would not imagine that to be Oh, exactly. So, how yeah. can they make the decision to, we're now going to offer your game this way, across the board to, to all the games they have? Because that is right. what they basically said, is that it's... Isn't it the same as, like, an end-user license agreement for us? I mean, isn't it basically the same, like, oh, the rules have changed, now agree to them if you want to be part of the service. I mean, isn't it... Exactly. But I mean, that's what I'm saying is like, if they just made this decision now, they, you know, have they already got agreements worked out with every single company that sells games through them? It's, it's or are they now going to start seeing games pulled from Steam? Yeah. Like where basically an EA says, ah, we're not down with that because our games are shitty and people are going to know that within two hours. Yeah. So we don't want. And them since we don't offer refunds like this over on Origin, we'll just do and, that. I mean, exactly. So I, I just I think this seems like such a. Actually, I think EA does have some sort of... I think it's Ubisoft with Uplay that... It, I think yeah, I think actually Origin the, does... Yeah, I think you're right. But, yeah, you know... I, well, Lauren, Lauren got a refund on, like, Battlefield 4, or, you know, really? something. So, yeah, so, I'm, 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 I'm spanking EA, but I think they actually do have a, a yeah, refund and, and we're just And we're really just using them as, as examples. I'm speaking but, of generalities. But my, my point is, like, if Steam were doing it, like, if Steam is the one saying, like, look, yeah, we I want what you you're to saying. be happy with our service... Yeah. We're going to take the hit for this to make it so make because it right. we think this will make you use Steam more, which will sell more games, which we get a percentage of. And so it's better for us. Yeah. Or is it, hey, we've made a decision for all of you game developers out there that we're going to start doing this. And you know how you stopped making demos 10 years ago, basically, because you didn't like giving away chunks of your game for free. We've just now changed that, and now you have to like it if you want to sell, you know, through games us. Games through Steam, yeah. and I, I think you could start to see games going more towards, you know, either being pulled from Steam and, and go over to Origin or go over to, um, you know, uh, GOG or something like that, you know, and and, and maybe they, you know, work a specific deal with with a different it's company. Possible. I don't know, but I just, I, it did to me feel a little strange that like. I, I, I am a little surprised we haven't heard any we other will. company come out and say, like, you know, yeah, by the way, we, our our games are going to be exempt from that. Because they did say that certain things would be exempt from it. Very they few, made though. it sound like it was very specific things, like things like uh, you level up a character yeah, well, that you, can't you buy be like, yeah, like, unleveled you buy like a piece of DLC in a game. That, you know, that, that, that changes the game in some way that, you know, that can't... Because this is digital, and somehow we can't unchange a change, right. even though we can revoke a game digitally. You know what I mean? Like, I, I still have a problem with the fact that they say, like, we can't undo something like can. that when I'm like, you can, yeah. you can undo 
anything. You can I mean, control like, you know, Z just, just about it's, anything. It's ridiculous to think you can't. It just... It just might be more more yeah. difficult, okay. and well, you know, th- those those are okay. Like all good points, and, and and one of the reasons that I really wanted to have you on the show today because I knew that you and I would come at this from different perspectives, and hopefully it would lead to you know to a good discussion. Um, I, I do feel that certain companies have been taking advantage of the way things have worked up till now uh, to basically rob the consumer of of a little bit of market power in the sense that, you know, basically the, the only option was either support the company, buy the game or don't support the company and buy the game. And th- there's that whole aspect of, um, you know, th- of basically the company hypes the game, they hype the game, they show you, uh, they show you very compartmentalized gameplay and everything. And, and, and they allow reviewers and, you know, people at trade shows to play, demos that are really really fine tuned and everybody's like this game is great and then they embargo the reviews for the full game because they want you to go out there on day one and spend that money and at that point it's too late they got you it doesn't matter that the reviews come out that day and it's like actually the game sucks after you get through the first uh you know the first uh, level or whatever uh it doesn't matter at that point because they they managed to get you to buy that game and there's nothing really that you can do about it at that point if it is if it's broken if the conduct just isn't all that good or whatever and so i feel like to a degree uh this is in answer to uh an imbalance that existed between company and consumer prior and you could be right in that uh there, there needs to be adjustments that happen down the line, but for my own part, uh, I, I definitely feel like there, 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 there needs to be some policy to address that situation on behalf of gamers, and I think Steam's taken a, a step towards doing that. But we will now ask the audience to sound off and let us know what they think. Uh, and and I'm sure you guys uh, have as many uh, as many thoughts on this, and we do, and probably even different takes on it than we've expressed here. So uh, I really am anxious to see where the discussion goes on this. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to hit the road and talk about the games we've been playing. And that concludes the road, um, because <laughs> I have desperately been trying to get back to The Witcher 3, but I have had, I've had two projects this week that have kept me busy every waking moment, uh, and then I got food poisoning uh, on top of it. So uh, I, have not, I have not gotten to touch The Witcher 3 since last week. I was talking with, uh, uh, talking with Eric last night. Uh, Eric's a good friend of Tony and, and I. Yeah. Uh, he's rolling on the website. And Although he didn't invite me to dinner. He, he I, I mean, he is. did after the fact. <laughs> like after it was over? Oh, okay. Well, like after, after we showed up and we're eating and like I mentioned... Well, within the next two hours, I I'm going to return name. his invitation to... And I said, no. oh yeah, Tony says hi. And he's like, oh, cool. And, you know... And like I should... <laughs> you're, like, you're making our friendship sound But deep like that oh, cool meant meaning. like, oh, it, it, it would have been cool if he came too. Aw, uh. Like, I knew that's what he meant. <laughs> anyway, okay. uh, the point, though, is that <laughs> Eric was Eric was giving me the hard sell on The Witcher. He's like, how, how much have you played? And I was like, oh, like, not very <laughs> much, man. Like, I'm still, you know, like, I'm still trying to do this and this and this. And he was, without spoiling anything, he was really trying to kind of impress upon me just how good the game got for him. Like, once he kind of got out of the prologue area. And that's the thing. I'm still languishing in the prologue area. That was good. Like, his enthusiasm... It fueled my enthusiasm, and and now these projects that I was talking about are done. So this coming week, I can kind of get back into it, uh, cool. and I'll talk about it next time, hopefully. So I talked a lot about a game I didn't play. Is basically what just happened. Uh, I know I'll get called on that, and I deserve to. Uh, I'm not going <laughs> to apologize, but I acknowledge that it happened. Just like politicians, uh, yeah. into the sunset. Let's talk about our last thing here. And just like politicians, nothing will come. Nothing of will come of it. Um, I'm going to start by saying, because people have been asking me about uh, Kung Fury. Kung Fury is out. I really want to talk about it, but it's like one of those things, like I kind of want to have Lauren on the show to talk about it together with. So I haven't really talked about Kung Fury, but yes, I know Kung Fury is out. I've seen Kung Fury, but um, but I really, I really want to wait for Lauren to come back so we can talk about it together. And I don't know if he's watched it yet or not, because he doesn't talk to me when he's out of the country, because it like costs money to talk on the phone or something. I don't know how it works. Jeez. Anyway, I bet it does. I bet that's ridiculous. 
Uh, it costs lots of money, I bet. Yeah. Not that I'd know. And ridiculous, because it just shouldn't anymore. I mean, like, no, it really should, because it's just data. There's just their tubes going everywhere. That's right. right. I mean, uh, come on. So first off, uh, in Into the Sunset, the thing I will talk about is XCOM 2. Again! Who didn't see oh, it coming? God. Didn't we... Oh, I got to plug IGN, uh, because IGN, you know, that's part of their IGN first lineup of videos. They've got... They've got an exclusive look at XCOM 2. They're talking about uh, what they've experienced and what they've seen so far, and they've, they've got a number of videos on this. So I want to recommend, if you're interested in XCOM 2, to go check out the IGN first series on XCOM 2. I'm linking to the first video here. Uh, and, and check it out, because they, they do have some cool stuff to talk about, and it's gotten me that much more enthusiastic for the game. That is my plug this week. Very cool. Tony. So the uh, the thing I was going to talk about this week is because I you know I think it, it's I've said it a bunch of times I, I unfortunately just don't game nearly as much as I used to right still always really find it interesting just just you know kind of keeping up with with the industry and 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 whatnot and one of the stories I kind of read about a week or so ago that I just found sad and funny at the same time and that was the announcement of a limited edition console version uh you know like like uh you know had like the different graphics and everything uh limited edition playstation vita edition for the final fantasy uh 14 heaven sword or heaven's award game okay now the reason i found this kind of sad is is uh, this game is not on the playstation vita what <laughs> so it's going to be on, I think, PS3, PS4, I, th- I think PC, too, maybe. Right. Um, but it's not on PlayStation. Here's, play- it's here's not your on limited Vita. PlayStation 4 controller featuring Laura Croft. That's exactly what it is. What? Let's be honest. It's, it's, <laughs> it is for um, fucking uh, uh, remote play. Okay. Like, I mean, they're essentially okay. selling I, I, right. a PlayStation I, Vita. Yeah. F- so, like, I mean, like, its purpose is for play this in your bathroom. For that. Now, on PlayStation I Vita. could be wrong. Maybe, maybe the game is eventually supposed to come to the Vita or something like maybe that. Maybe this but is like, a tease. I don't, maybe this is how they're letting you know. It is. Well, that's the thing I thought was so. It's funny. One, just because I mean, come on. And then it's sad because, <laughs> because it is. I. It's I I just I really hate the potential that the Vita had and what it has become. Right, uh, is 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 frustrating. Like I just it to me it's like one of those like it. If you could get some of the companies making some of the games for like say the 3ds, like if you could get like Bravely Default, mm-hmm. like that was an awesome game, really cool game, a uh, lot of fun. Like imagine you could have that on a superior piece of hardware. You know the uh, graphic capability could be an even a little better. I mean the game looked beautiful on 3ds, but I mean just imagine higher resolution, oh, yeah. you know better better color, better screen, you know, and like Vita, it, it, <laughs> just, it could have been awesome. And uh, it's just it's it has become an extra controller for your PlayStation four. I mean, at least here in the States. And I think most of the world, except for maybe Japan, I think Japan has still uh, got a couple of titles coming out for it here and there. But even those I think are typically like, you know, the, the remakes of a lot of the rhythm games and, sure. you know, some, some obs- more obscure role playing games. And whatnot. So I don't know. It's just, it's kind of, like I said, simultaneously funny and sad that uh, the state the that the time. PlayStation Vita is in now. It'd be awesome to just see like some sort of like a, they just decide to destroy a Vita on stage at E3 this year, just to like signify <laughs> the end, the end of its of its life or whatever. But uh, but that's what I got. As this you week. say, sad. Yes. Well, that's going to do it for us. Uh, once again, I want to thank Tony for sitting in for Lauren this week. Really appreciate that, man. It was great chatting with you as always. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and now we turn everything over to you guys officially. If you've got any comments, any thoughts that you would like to share on what we talked about in this week's episode, whether that is Final Fantasy Heaven's Ward appearing on the PS Vita, but not on the PS Vita, if you take my meaning. Uh, the IGN first look at XCOM 2. D- wait, hold off on Kung Fury. Hold off until we talk about it with Lauren. Uh, <laughs> Witcher 3, tell me anything that you want, uh, but no spoilers, please. Of course, our conversation on the Steam refund policy and how that might change things for gamers and developers, where you think you're at with that. The XCOM 2 announcement, the Xbox One getting a one terabyte with new controller SKU, the Uncharted Remastered Collection, and of course, Fallout 4, as you've already been talking about that. Share all of these thoughts and anything else you want to discuss. We live to read your comments. Thank you, guys 
guys so much for listening. We should be back next week with Lauren just in time for E3. Until then, remember you don't stop playing because you get old. You get old because you stop playing. Good night. Good night.